Hello, welcome back. I'm Ron Mullet. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this mahogany vintage bookcase. The base of the bookcase is all solid mahogany. It has eight legs and each one is tapered on four sides. The case itself is made from mahogany plywood and the grain on it is absolutely stunning. Along the top, there's some detail with some vertical grain and two inlays that just really top this thing off. The shelves are solid mahogany. So let's get going. I'm not going to waste your time showing you how I rough cut lumber, so I'm going to speed through this and get right to some assembly. Since I'm going to build the base first, I've rough cut all of the aprons and all of the frame pieces and also for my legs. The legs are an inch and a half square so I've taken the three-quarter inch and I'm going to glue these together. What you need to do is make sure that you sand the inside mating surfaces so that there's no little chunks of wood or anything that can keep this from going together tightly so you don't see a seam. My next step is to glue all of these parts together for the legs. I like to use a piece of melamine to do this so I can wipe the glue up real easily. It doesn't take a lot of glue. Now just take the two pieces, slip them together, and rub them back and forth. I've talked about this before. This is a rub joint and it just compresses all that glue in there and creates a vacuum. It actually sucks itself together. I can't I'm trying really hard. I can't pull those apart and I could slide them apart. So once they're like that, I'll just put on the clamps. Everybody with a small shop can relate to how there's just never enough room for clamps. I'm using loose mortise and tenons on the legs and aprons for the base. This jig is called the Morley Mortiser. It was designed by Philip Morley. It is extremely accurate and easy to adjust and makes perfect mortises every time. I'll leave a link in the description for the plans to build your own. That's a perfect mortise. I use white oak for my loose tenons. I machine it to a half an inch thick and then I cut it to the width of the mortise. I then use a quarter inch round over bit in my router and round over all four corners. Next I'll cut each one to length. And there's the fit I'm looking for. I've got the base dry fitted together. The loose tenons work well. Everything seems to be all right. And now is going to be a lot of detailing on this. And uh, the legs have to be tapered and there has to be a detail put on the bottom of this and then on top. So that'll be the next project. Now it's time to taper these legs. I start by marking where I want the cut to start and where I want the cut to end. I put it on my tapering jig and line those lines up and then I clamp it down. Since I have so many cuts to make, I've added two pieces of wood here so that it is always a repeatable cut. Now when I do this, two sides will lay flat. But then when I turn the other two sides, this end will be up, so I've got a piece of wedge here that I'll slide under to support the leg.
These legs are tapered from the bottom up to an inch and a half down from the top. I really like this little bead detail that I cut on the bottom of these aprons using a beading bit and my router table. Okay, this is the glue up of the front. Now I had some clamping challenges. I didn't have a clamp that was five feet long. So I used two parallel clamps on each end, flipped that end head 90 degrees, and then used a parallel clamp in the middle to uh, secure those two together. To keep the whole thing from buckling, since it's five feet long, I used some spring clamps on the bench dogs along the front of my bench vise. The leg and apron frame are finished. Next, I have to put a piece of wood on here. It's an inch and three quarters wide for the bookcase to sit on. In doing that, I'll miter these corners. Okay, I've got the miters cut on the frame. Next, I'm going to glue the edges well actually the ends now when i'm gluing up 45 mitered frames like this whether it's a picture frame or a big frame like this i like to use these it's a corner clamp it goes in here they're individual like this put the pliers on they spread apart and got a little point and these do an excellent job of pulling that miter together As you can see, it pulls those miters up tight. Next, I'm going to build the box for the bookcase. I'm making it out of three quarter inch mahogany plywood. Like I said earlier, the grain in this is just amazing. I've cut the plywood sides, the bottom and the top to lengthen width. The next step is to cut some dados in the top and the bottom for the uprights. I've adjusted this dado stack to the exact width of the plywood and I'm going to put it against the fence. I've got the fence set. I'm going to use two blocks because it's important to keep constant downward pressure when you're running through a dado stack because with all those blades it'll want to lift the wood up and then the depth of your dado won't be correct. Yeah, that's the kind of fit I'm looking for. Next, I cut a rabbit at the end of each side for the top and bottom to fit in. Next is a dry fit using my homemade squares to see if everything is going to fit okay. Now I need to drill some holes to put the shelf pins in. You see, I've drilled these holes already. The way I've done this is I found the center line of this board. I've taken a piece of just regular old pegboard. I found the center line of it. I want to drill eight holes on either side. I put a piece of tape on so I know where to drill the holes. So what I'll do is I'll line the center line of this with the center line of the board. Now I'll clamp that all down. I'm using a quarter inch bit with a depth stop on it. sand that down and that's one side. I've got a color matching problem that I need to resolve. To solve the situation of the dark and the light mahogany and all the other pieces not matching, I've come up with a solution. I'm using General Finishes uh, brown mahogany water stain and I did that on some boards and it was just a little bit too dark so what I did was I mixed it half and half, half water and half stain. And I'm pretty satisfied with what's happening with it, with this combination. Now I'm just using paper towel. I can squeeze it out, put it in there. Now with a water-based stain, you have to be pretty quick because it's water-based and it dries very quickly. It's not like an oil-based stain where you can let it set and set and don't worry about it. You have to make sure you don't have a dry edge where you stop, clean it off, and then start again because there'll be a definite line there. They won't mix together. So I'm pretty satisfied with that color right there. Once I get a 
clear coat finish on it, it'll just blend in with the rest of the mahogany. I'm also going to stain the base and the individual pieces of trim. The only part I'm not staining is the A side of that plywood because it has that beautiful grain. And a clear finish will make it pop. Well, the staining on the base turned out good. I'm happy with that. I've got all my pieces of trim stained. Now it's time to start cutting these pieces of trim that I've made on the table saw, router. And let's get this thing put together so it looks like a bookcase. The box itself is pretty straightforward. Put glue in the dados, clamp it all together. I use homemade wooden squares to make sure that all the uprights and everything stay straight. The first place I'm going to start is at the top of this bookcase. I can't sand this afterwards because this part is stained. Now I'm going to use a super blue tape clamp on here. Stick it down here and then pull it tight. Okay, the next piece of trim is going to be this top rail that goes across here. I've cut an eighth inch cove uh, in the bottom front. It'll be glued on like this. Now around the outside edge of the top of this bookcase, I'm going to put a quarter inch square inlay of uh, hard maple. So I need to cut a quarter inch square rabbit. I'm going to use my router with a rabbiting bit in here. The base wasn't big enough for the router bit to fit through, so I had to make a plywood base. I'm going to cut it in eighth of an inch and then an eighth of an inch at a time. From that curly maple board, I've cut quarter inch strips, run them through the planer to get them down to an exactly a quarter inch square, and now I'm going to glue them into this groove all the way around the top. Once again, I use that magic clamp blue tape. Along the top of this bookcase, I'm going to have a vertical element, and then it'll have an inlay along the bottom. What I'm using is the plywood, and uh, what I've got is a long piece of melamine board. Uh, the glue won't stick to it, and I put a stop block along the end. First thing I'm going to do is take a piece of tape, put on one end, just kind of roll that back, and then I'll apply the glue to one end. Then I'll put them together and just do a little rub joint. I've got it against the stop block lined up. Now I can push against that stop block and pull this tape. Blue tape will stretch so it makes a good clamp. Now I'll turn it over and do the same thing again. Push it tight. Pull the tape tight. Stretch the tape and rub it down. Now this may not look like much of an end joint clamp, but look at that. It'll support the entire board. So this is a good way to glue narrow pieces end to end without having to use any kind of biscuits or mortise and tenon or, or splines or anything like that. The next step is I need to lay this inlay in the bottom of this piece of trim right here. This inlay is store-bought. I got it from Woodcraft. It's a quarter of an inch wide, and it's a sixty-fourth of an inch thick. Now I need to cut a rabbit on here, so I've got a quarter inch dado stack set in there, and I've got my sacrificial sense fence set right up to the very edge. So I hope this will work. Now with the uh, curly maple inlay glued in, the next step is to install this front trim 
with the inlay across the bottom. It's just a matter of gluing and clamping. I'm pleased with the way the inlay turned out. And I really like that little cove cut on the bottom of that top piece. Now it's time to turn my attention to the front trim on all this exposed plywood. You have to excuse me, I'm dealing with a little bit of sniffles here, so excuse me. I'm going to start by putting the bottom trim on here. Now I've attached the bookcase to the base. I've got it up on sawhorses. Don't have a lot of room because of my small shop. But that's going to be my next. I'm going to have to cut 45 degree angles on the two corner pieces. Now I've applied glue only to the side. I'm not on the bottom. Just to the side it's going to be against the plywood. I've already applied the end piece down here. And then I'm just going to pin nail this rather than trying to clamp it. This will hold it just fine. Next step is to cover the uprights of the bookcase with the trim. I've cut to an inch and a half wide and the two inside pieces I've cut to three quarters of an inch wide. I've also run the eighth inch cove on each side of the pieces. So I've planed the shelves to uh, about three quarters of an inch and I've got them cut to length and width. Now, to me, they just look a little bit wide without a detail on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow along with the eighth inch cove on each side of the shelves. I think it makes them look a little bit better. So now it's time to start spraying the bookcase. I've got my HVLP sprayer set up here. I'm using General Finish's high performance uh, satin. It's a water-based finish. And I've got my spray booth set up. There's a video that will explain how I made this spray booth. It folds up. And inside I've got the bookcase ready to go. I've got There's a fan in the window with uh, filters on it. The bookcase is on two furniture dollies. That way I can rotate it around as I'm spraying it. So let's get started. If you like this video, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you on my next one.